Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, another child's toy. Well, it's Kids Day here on the show again today with another opportunity for you to get your young ones out here in the shop to make something with you, something that they can be proud of and something that they can display or play with or whatever they want to do. It's their creation and it's a great way to introduce them to or continue introducing them to this craft that we love so much. Now, it's no different today uh, that I've designed another toy and well, you know what? Let's head over to the bench and see what I came up with. Well, I have always loved the look of a Spitfire aircraft. And today what I've done is I've gone on the computer and I've designed my version of the Spitfire. Um, now this involves a little bit of compound cutting, but nothing crazy, nothing out of reach. What we're gonna start off with is a three quarter inch thick piece of poplar and it's going to be for our main body of our plane. So the first thing we want to do is I want to coat the entire surface of our poplar with masking tape. And then from there, we will cut out our pattern, spray the back with spray adhesive, allow it to dry up for three minutes. And once it's tacked up there after the three minute period of time, we will rub it down to the pattern. What you are to the stock rather. What you want to pay attention to though here for this one, this is a compound cut. So this fold line that I show right here on the pattern, you want to make sure that that fold line aligns perfectly with the corner edge of your stock and the pattern will wrap around onto this face. So this section, the top view of the pattern will end up on this face and the side view will end up on this face. Well, the very next thing that we need to do here is we're going to cut the side view profile. And the first thing we need is some blade entry holes. So one here for the window of the cab and one here for this little star design. So let's get those drilled and then I'll see you over at the scroll saw. To cut this, I've put a number seven reverse tooth blade in. And the first thing we're going to cut is the interior cuts of our window and the star. Got a bit of a tension issue there, so I'm just going to fix that up. Okay, and at this point with those two interior cuts done, we can now cut the perimeter of the body of our plane. Well, now it's time to cut the top profile. So what we need to do is put our Spitfire back inside our stock, just like this. We're going to use some clear packing tape and tightly tape this inside so that it's nice and secure. Then we're going to turn it up on end and we're going to cut these lines here and that should give us our final profile. It's, um, it's a bit of a tougher cut. So just take it nice and slow and everything will be fine. Um, barring this, if you didn't want to cut it like this on the scroll saw, you could very easily make a template of the top profile and trace it onto your cut Spitfire and then just use a sander if you wish or you can shape it by hand. So either way, let's get this top profile cut. All right, and at this point now, when you peel off the tape 
and your patterns, the body of your plane will look something like this. So it's got the cutouts and it's got some shape top and bottom. Now at this point what I want to do is I want to sand this here just to level out where I cut the uh, the scroll saw out to stop the cut. So I'm just going to do that with a sander. I'm going to give the whole body a nice sanding all over and then we can carry on with the next step. Well, the next thing that we're going to cut out will be the wings and they will get cut from one quarter inch thick stock. In this case here, I've chosen cherry. Uh, you can make it out of whatever species you like. I only chose cherry because that's what I happen to have up in the rack. So either way, let's get the patterns adhered. Same process with the masking tape, spray adhesive, set it up for three minutes and then rub it down and then we can get these wings cut out. Well, when we cut the body, we used a number seven reverse tooth blade. That is overkill for these wings. So what we're going to do is we've reduced it down to a number three reverse tooth for the quarter inch thick material. So let's get these wings cut out and it's just a matter of cutting around the perimeter of each one of the patterns. Before we remove the pattern, what I want to do is you want to transfer this center line on each one of the wings. You want to transfer that here so that we will have a record of where that center line is because we're going to need that to line up our wing. Now, just for the record, the way that these patterns go with the writing facing the proper way, this the top of the pattern is the front of the airplane. So this face is front. The top of the pattern faces front. So now that you have those center lines transferred onto there, remove the pattern, give the wing a good sanding, and make sure that you have that center line drawn on the wing on the bottom surface. Okay, and before I remove the patterns on each one on this, right in the middle here, I mark the front face of each one of these wings. That'll disappear in the assembly, so it's no big deal for it to be there. So now it's time with the one surface of the wings sanded to assemble what we have so far. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to mark the center of the bottom of our plane's body. And we'll just give just a little tick there just to represent the center. Doesn't have to be a huge mark. And then we'll do the same back here. Okay, and what we can do now is making sure that we have our front face lining front. We will apply some glue to our wing, line it up here. Just like that, we'll place the front one there in our groove that we cut. We will place our rear one here in this groove that we cut. Just like that. And we can glue them into place. Okay, and we can clamp that up, clean up the squeeze out, and let it set up. While I'm waiting for the wings to dry up, I'm going to cut the rest of the pieces. Now, I have the landing gear, which will be cut out of quarter inch maple. I have these landing gear brackets for the front landing gear. They will be cut out of the quarter inch maple. These tires here, three quarters of an inch in diameter, they will be cut out of quarter inch walnut. Now the prop is a little different. The way that I've designed this, these are pretty fragile sticking out here like that. So for that reason, I've chosen plywood, quarter inch plywood to cut the prop out of. Now, I may include when this is all said and done, another pattern that will incorporate a circle all the way around, maybe to, to, uh, to strengthen those. And although it won't be as cool looking as this, 
at least you'll have an option if you want to make it out of real wood. I just think that the blades of the prop are going to snap off if you make it out of real wood and the toy is meant to be played with. With all the patterns adhered on here, uh, we can still use that number three reverse tooth blade to cut them out. But the first thing that you want to do is you want to take your landing gear brackets over to the drill press and in the places where I've marked for the holes, you want to drill a 532nd inch diameter hole. Other than that, you just cut these out following the perimeter lines. I don't think we need another video of it. Uh, Take your time and uh, you'll be just fine. I'll see you when these get cut. Well, at this point in time, we can consider our landing gear brackets and our tail landing gear finished. We can peel off the patterns and give them a sanding. But we need to drill a few holes here in our front wheels and our prop. So in our wheels, we'll drill a 1 8 diameter through hole, dead center of each one. And in the center of the hub here of our prop, we're going to drill a through 5 32nd diameter hole. Okay, and with those drilled, we can peel the patterns off of those. And we have one more hole here to drill. And that will be right in the middle of our nose here right in the center it's going to be a 1 8 diameter hole and we're going to drill it approximately a half an inch to three quarters of an inch deep okay so at this point in time we need some 1 8 diameter dowels and what i have here is a 5 8 diameter dowel cut to 5 8 of an inch long and we've drilled a 1 8 diameter hole in the center so i'm going to glue in a 1 8 diameter dowel right in the middle there. Um, I drilled the hole, you know, about a quarter to 3 8 of an inch deep. So we're going to glue that in place and let that dry. As well, we have two pieces of 3 8 diameter dowel cut to quarter inch long. Um, we have a 1 8 diameter hole. We're going to take a length of 1 8 dowel and we're going to glue one end onto the end here and once we get that done and get our wheel sanded up we're going to slide our wheel onto this dowel and glue it onto our pin just like that with the 5 8 inch dowel glued onto the end of the 1 8 dowel it's now time to make the nose cone and this is the suggested shape for you to cut this in but it's kind of hard to cut so what we're going to do is we're going to take it over to the belt sander and we're going to use this dowel to turn this dowel like that spin it to shape this piece to get the shape of the nose cone that we want i would not suggest letting the young ones do this i would say that mommy or daddy would do this um, if you don't want to use a power sander for this, that's okay. You can sand that dowel by hand. These dowels are rather soft and will take to sanding easily. So either way, I'm going to shape this nose cone and I'll see you when I get that done. And that would be our nose cone done. So we can put that aside for now and we're going to turn our attention back to our axle that we glued up here. Now, what you want to do is you want to measure from the inside edge of this wheel out and you want to leave two and three eighths of an inch worth of dowel here at the end of the tire. From there, all I'm going to do is slide both of our brackets on here. We're going to place a wheel on here and then we're going to glue another dowel with the center hole in it onto both our axle and our wheel. You know what, that one's a little crooked. It's not exactly glued center. So I think I'm gonna make a new one for the sake of a quarter inch length of 3 8 dowel. I'd rather do a new one than leave that off center like that. So we can glue this together and once it dries, we can mount it to the bottom of the plane. Okay, and with that glued up, we can glue our landing gear onto the bottom of our wings. We'll just glue it centered. While we're at it, we have our tail landing gear. Now, depending on your cutting and how things went, you may need to adjust 
the pattern here. For me, uh, I think actually my pattern for the end of this point here is a little too long. So I had to sand a little bit off of it and we're going to mount it underneath here on our wings, centered, just like that. So we're gonna glue those in place and then there's one last step that we need to do to complete our toy. Well, the last thing here to do is add our prop. And for that, we're just going to take our nose cone that we made earlier. We're going to place the 1 8 dowel right through our prop, and that will get glued into the hole that we drilled in the nose of the plane. Now, you'll want to be sure that uh, you don't push it in so far that you pin this prop. You want that prop to be able to spin. So let's get the prop glued in, and then uh, I think we can call this one pretty much done. And there you have it. A Spitfire toy plane. Guys, these projects, regardless of your level of experience in woodworking, these projects, these toys are just fun to make. That's the bottom line. They are an absolute blast and they are 10 times more fun when you get the young ones in the shop with you to make these toys with you and you feed off their level of excitement. There is something to be said about a young child and their innocence and their ability to soak in new material and new skills and getting them involved with woodworking on projects like these at a young age is so important to their development and as well, honestly, it makes memories that last a lifetime. You guys are probably tired of hearing me say it, but I can't stress it enough. Sometimes you've just got to step away from those fancy schmancy boxes and the furniture builds and all that other stuff, and you got to take a step back Bring the young ones in and get them involved with something. Because I'm telling you, those small little simple projects that we look at and think, yeah, that was fun, they look at that thing and they are building the Taj Mahal. They are doing a painting by Michelangelo. They are creating their own uh, Picasso. Uh, and that's what they see. They see a higher level. And we will never understand it because we've outgrown those memories. We have forgot what it's like to have that new knowledge to make something new. Some of us <laughs> are still kids at heart, so we still love this stuff. But get the young ones in to build these things, guys. Um, it's just so much fun. And what a bonding experience between mummy and child or daddy and child, big brother or big sister and child. It is just one of those things that I can't explain. Please don't take it for granted. Get the children in the shop and make one of these planes. Guys, I want to... Whoa. <laughs> Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. As always with all of these toy plans, um, if you want this toy plan and you want to make one of these for yourself, send me an email at a cut above underscore woodworking at hotmail.com. I would be more than happy to send you a PDF pattern for this Spitfire plane. Um, or you can drop me a line on the channel's Facebook page. It's completely up to you, whatever you would like to do. I would say out of the four toys that I've made here on the show so far, this one here has been my favorite for a couple reasons. Number one, um, the other ones were inspired and designed by photographs that were sent to me of wooden toys, whereas this Spitfire was designed by me using photographs of Spitfires that I found on the internet. So uh, this has been the first one that has gone 100% from photograph to head to wood as opposed to seeing an already built wooden toy and then being inspired by that build. So this one's great and honestly I'm quite proud of it and I hope that you guys are going to build one and be proud of it as well. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Click that bell so that you won't miss notifications of future episodes of the show. I hope that you enjoyed today's content. 
I hope that you're going to try this for yourself. I hope you're going to contact me and get one of these patterns so that you can. I hope you're going to get your kids in the shop because that's what this is all about today. And more importantly, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.